So continuing with our next topic on mobile automation with APM, we are going to talk about how we can start and stop the APM server programmatically. So until now, uh, we have been writing our tests uh, here in the class, but uh, before we can run this test, uh, we have to manually go and start the APM server from the command line because uh, if the APM server is not running, then your test will fail, okay? So let me quickly show you that. So if I have stopped the APM server here, and now if I go here and I try to execute this, then uh, you will see that the test will fail, okay? So that is because uh, it cannot start a new session and the remote server is not running. Right, So that's the first prerequisite before you can run any particular uh, test uh, in your APM. Although starting this manually works, right? But when you are working uh, on a real-time project, you don't want to do this manually because then uh, you cannot put this uh, framework into a CI CD pipeline, right? Because there is a manual step. So it's always better that um, you do everything uh, within your program or within your framework so that it can start and stop the server. It can um, add the desired capabilities and then it can run the tests. So all the prerequisite and uh, the post conditions are all satisfied within your test itself, right? So that uh, there are no manual steps uh, when you are running uh, your particular uh, test which you have written for your particular application. So what we are going to do is we are going to build some methods which can basically manage the APM server. So part of this, we will see how to um, start and stop uh, the APM server. We'll also see how we can um, kill any session which is currently running uh, using the APM server. So uh, for this, uh, I'm going to create a new package and I'm going to call this uh, APM. Now inside this, uh, we are going to create a new class and we are going to call this manage APM server. Okay, so inside this, uh, we are going to write our methods which can start, stop, or kill any APM session or servers. So basically we need to use some classes in order to do this programmatically, okay? So the first class which uh, we have to use um, is the APM service builder. So let's go ahead and APM service builder. Uh, we'll create an instance of this, okay? so that we can use this later on. And then uh, we need to use another class, okay? And uh, this is the local service APM driver, okay? So if you type this, you will see uh, APM driver local service. And again, uh, we will create another instance for this, okay? Um, let's go ahead with this. So let's create some um, methods here now. So I'm going to call this public static void. And I'm going to say start APM server. Okay. Now inside this, uh, we are going to first build our APM service. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to build the APM service here. So we are going to use the uh, builder instance which we created earlier and we'll create a new instance of uh, this particular class, okay? Once you do that, then uh, you can add some arguments into this particular instance, okay? So we are going to use this. And uh, when you type dot, you will see the number of methods which it already has, okay? So using these methods, uh, you can build your own APM service. So you can see there is using both, there are arguments, you can pass capabilities as well. You can also use any free port. Uh, you can uh, use the IP address, 
and um, other driver executable and you can also pass an apm um, js file okay so um, out of this we'll be using some of these methods so the first method which we will use is the ip address okay so we'll use the with ip address and uh, then here uh, we will pass the ip address okay so if you remember uh, we use the default ip address currently so we'll pass it here and then uh, we will also pass uh, the port okay so we'll use the using port method here and again we'll use the default one here okay so we'll pass it so we'll say 4723 it is an integer value and then we will pass some arguments here okay so we will say with argument so this is one of um, the default ones uh, which we can use uh, it is called the general server flag okay so this is just used uh, for using the log level as you can see there are lots of flags uh, which can be used here so like session override, uh, then uh, base path, callback port, uh, there are lots of them, okay? So I'm going to just use uh, the log level here. And then uh, I will going to pass a value called debug. So this is just to make sure that uh, we capture all the logs when we are running this particular service, okay? So once that's done, then I'm going to use the service to start the service, okay? So we'll say start the server with uh, the builder. So the builder service, which we have uh, already developed. So now uh, what we will do is uh, we will say here, APM driver local service. Okay, so we are using a different instance here. And here um, we are going to use the APM driver local service class. And after this, uh, we are going to build the service. Okay, so this is a method. Uh, inside this, we are going to pass the APM service builder. Okay, so this is how you will create um, a local service. And then using this local service, we can run our APM server. Okay, so here you can see uh, it has got a number of different methods. So we'll be working with start, stop, uh, we'll also use is running. So let's go ahead and start our server. Okay. So this is the complete method um, how you can start your APM server. Okay. So first you build your service and then uh, you use the local service class to um, just start the server with that particular service. Okay. So now uh, we'll build our next method, which is to stop the server, okay? So that's pretty simple. So we'll build this method. And here we'll say stop uh, the server, okay? And what we can do is again, we can use the local service, which we have built, and then uh, we can say stop, okay? Now, one thing which we can do here is before we stop, uh, we can check whether the service is already running or not, okay? So maybe we can put a if condition here. Uh, so we will check if APM driver local service, there is a method called is running, okay? And I want to check also that the APM uh, local service is not null. Okay, so I will say is not equals to null. So these are the two checks uh, which I want to do before um, I can run this particular method because if I don't do this and if the service is null, then uh, it will return an exception that uh, there is no service running. So it cannot stop the service, right? So it can only stop the service when it is running. So this is one check uh, which we will do here. Obviously we can do some logging here as well. Okay, to see whether the service um, has stopped or not. Now there is another method uh, which we have to use before we start uh, the APM server is to kill any currently running session. Okay, uh, if you don't kill the session which is running in the background, 
then your uh, EPM server will not start because by default, you can just start uh, one session of your EPM server uh, on a particular device, okay? So you have to always make sure that um, there is no APM service running before you try to start your APM server. We are going to call this private static and void, and we will say kill APM session, okay? And now here inside this, uh, we will use a particular command, okay? So we'll build a command. This is going to basically kill all the sessions, right? So we will put here slash user slash bin. And uh, we will use something called kill all. Okay, so it will basically kill everything. And then we'll pass some parameters like we'll pass this command kill. And then uh, we will pass the program, okay? So APM requires or it runs on um, the node service or server, right? So if we kill all the uh, processes uh, which are related to node, then it will kill the APM service, okay? So this is a easy way of killing all your APM sessions if they are running in the background. The multiple ways to do this, uh, this is one of the ways, right? Now inside this, uh, we will put inside the try catch block, we'll say runtime, dot get runtime dot execute and we will pass the command here okay and then uh, we'll also put this inside an catch block so that uh, it can return any exception if we get any okay so this will basically kill uh, the if there is any apm session then it will kill this right now, um, if we want to integrate this into our start APM server method, then what we can do here is um, we can call this before we try to start this, right? So we'll just call this method here. So internally, it will call the kill APM session first. It will kill everything, and then it will come here and uh, it will build the service, and then it will start the server, okay? So that's the whole uh, process which we need to follow here. Now, uh, what we can do is um, we can take up any particular uh, test, okay, which we have written. Let's take this first test. So now uh, what we can do is before we start um, the driver, right, uh, when we create a new session, uh, we are going to call the manage APM server method, which we have written. Okay, so we are going to call this. Inside this, we'll say start APM server, right? And uh, when we are closing, so once we quit the driver, then we are going to call another method called stop APM server, okay? So these are the two methods which we'll use, which will make sure that we manage our APM server programmatically, okay? So we don't need to do anything manually. Now we can just run our test uh, without uh, worrying about whether the APM server is running in the background or it is not running. Um, our test will take care of everything. So um, let's go ahead and run this now. And we can see everything uh, in the console itself. So if you look here, it has now started the APM server here and I can see it in the console logs, okay? So this is uh, the port, as you can see, uh, it is trying to also launch the device now. Okay, and uh, you can see everything uh, in the logs right here. So it will uh, start the server, it will start a new session with all the desired capabilities. Um, it will take hold of the device as well, and then um, it will run the test, and then uh, it should close uh, the APM session, and it should quit or complete the test, okay? So um, all end-to-end -end, uh, is now automated, there is uh, no manual step in this particular test. 
Okay, so as you can see, uh, now the test is completed and it has passed. Um, you can go through the logs to see uh, what happened right in your console. So once it has completed the test, uh, it also has uh, stopped the APM sessions, okay? So this is how you can build uh, your end-to-end -end test, which will handle everything. Uh, from your APM server to all the desired capabilities to your test. And then you can easily run this um, in any CICD tool like Jenkins by calling this particular test. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.